Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to FTV Speaks. Here we have a fiery, fiery speech from Bernie Sanders. Now, I haven't seen it yet, so we're going to watch it for the first time together right now. Reserving the right to object, and I will object to the anonymous consent request by Senator Scott and offer my own resolution. Unlike Senator Scott's resolution, mine is short and to the point. And I think it expresses the feelings of the overwhelming majority of people in our country and, in fact, throughout the world. And this is what our resolution says, quote, whereas every Palestinian life matters, yep. and whereas every Israeli life matters, Matter. now, therefore, be it resolved that the Senate urges an immediate ceasefire to prevent any further loss of life and further escalation of conflict in Israel and the Palestinian territories, and supports diplomatic efforts to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, to uphold international law, and to protect the human rights of Israelis and Palestinians. And I'd like to thank my colleagues, Senator Warren, uh, Senator Van Hollen, Senator Kane, Senator Kaufman, Senator Heinrich, Senator Murphy, Senator Merkley, Senator Ossoff, Senator Leahy, and Senator Markey for co-sponsoring this resolution. I would also like to point out that those of us who are supporting an immediate ceasefire are certainly not alone. We join with nearly the unanimous uh, call from the European Union, with United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, with Pope Francis, and with many others. In other words, all over the world, people are seeing the terrible tragedy that is taking place in the region, and they want an end to it as quickly as possible. We want to end this now, right now. Now, I happen to have read Senator Scott's resolution, and I was particularly struck by one sentence in it on page two. And what it says, and I quote, the Senate mourns the loss of innocent life caused by Hamas's rocket attacks, end of quote. That was on page two. Now, I certainly agree with that. And I think every member of Congress agrees with that. The loss of 12 innocent Israeli lives is in fact a tragedy. But what about the loss of 227 Palestinian lives? There we go. Including 64 children and 38 women. They don't care because they're Palestinian, Senator right? Scott not believe that the loss of those Palestinian lives, 64 children and 38 women, among others, is not a tragedy. I believe that we should be mourning the loss of Israeli life, but we should also be mourning the loss of Palestinian life. 100% agree. 100%. Or perhaps some people think that Palestinian lives don't matter. Don't matter. I would hope not. Hope not, too. And let us be very clear that when we talk about the tragedy that is now taking place in Gaza, what we are talking about is not only the terrible loss of life. As I hope most people know, Gaza, before this war, was an extremely poor and desperate community, and the latest Israeli bombardment has only made a bad situation much, much worse. Let us remember Gaza has been under a blockade since 2007, imposed by Israel and Egypt. Most people are unable to leave. Basic necessities are extremely hard to obtain. Gaza is the home to about 2 million inhabitants. Its population density is among the highest in the world. Just a huge amount of people squeezed 
into a very small area. More than half of the population of Gaza, some 56%, live below the poverty line. Wow. 70% of the population is receiving aid, according to estimates by the United Nations. Food rations constitute most of that aid. Unemployment in Gaza is around 45%. 48% of the population is under the age of 18. And 70%, let me repeat, 70% of the young people in Gaza are unemployed with no hope for the future. And because of this war, the bombardment from Israeli planes, this makes it the worse. situation has gotten even worse. Today's New York Times reports that the Israeli bombardment has, and I quote, this is from the New York Times, damaged 17 hospitals and clinics in Gaza. Got that? 17 hospitals and clinics have been damaged. The bombardment has wrecked its only coronavirus test laboratory, sent fetid wastewater into the streets, and broke water pipes serving at least 800,000 people. Sewage systems inside Gaza have been destroyed. A desalination, desalination plant that helped provide fresh water to a quarter of a million people in the territory is offline. Dozens of schools have been damaged or closed, forcing some 600,000 students to miss classes. Some 72,000 Gazans have been forced to flee their homes." End quote. That's from the New York Times this morning. Perhaps the situation has gotten even worse. I don't know. And I want everybody to think for a moment what it means to be living in a very small territory with dozens and dozens of planes attacking and bombing. What does it mean in particular to the children, children. Mm. of Gaza? Jess Gonham, a professor of psychiatry at the University of California, San Francisco, who specializes in the psychological effects of armed conflict on children, told USA Today, and I quote, quote, what children in Gaza are exposed to on a regular basis exceeds anything, anything that any children anywhere else in the world experience. There's basically no place to go for these children. They are Nowhere. unable to escape, end of quote. When you put people under this sort of continued intense pressure with no hope for a better future, you cannot be surprised when violence erupts. Indeed, three years ago, in May of 2018, I wrote a letter with 12 of my colleagues urging the Trump administration to do more to alleviate the ongoing humanitarian crisis in Gaza. In that letter, we cited Israeli defense officials, Israeli defense officials, who were warning that if the crisis was not addressed, it could lead to yet another eruption of violence. Yeah, it's inevitable. Why didn't we take notice then? And when this latest war ends, will the United States once again turn away? Will we consign those children once again to the horrible conditions they are forced to live under today? And I would hope that my colleagues appreciate that we must not do that. Senator Scott's resolution says a lot about Hamas terrorists in Gaza. And let us be clear, Hamas is a terrorist organization. It is a corrupt organization, and it is a repressive organization. <coughs> but here is the irony. It is resolutions like Senator Scott's that help Hamas. Hamas would be overjoyed 
if Senator Scott's resolution were to pass. Now, why is that? Let us understand that one of Hamas's goals is to show Palestinians that they represent the real resistance to the occupation. Senator Scott's resolution would help them do just that. By making this all about Hamas, 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 Senator Scott is effectively echoing Hamas's own argument that Hamas is the true face of Palestinians' struggle. And I reject that. Because my friends, day after day, year after year, decade after decade, Nonviolent Palestinian activists struggle against the daily violence and harassment of occupation. Right. Violence and harassment subsidized, by the way, with billions of U.S. taxpayer dollars. Let us be very clear. No one is arguing that Israel or any government does not have the right to self-defense and the responsibility to protect its I'm sure people. everyone will agree that, yeah. We should understand that while Hamas firing rockets into Israeli communities is absolutely unacceptable, today's conflict did not begin with those rockets. It goes much, much deeper. For years, we have seen a deepening Israeli occupation in the West Bank and East Jerusalem and a perpetual blockade on Gaza, all of which makes life increasingly unbearable for the Palestinian people. The truth is, these policies, like this current war, will continue to strengthen, to strengthen extremists on both sides, including Hamas. You want to strengthen Hamas, support this war. We, Congress, must understand that in more than a decade of his right-wing rule in Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu has cultivated an increasingly intolerant and authoritarian type of racist nationalism. In his frantic effort wow, Bernie to Sanders, power man. and avoid mm. prosecution for corruption, Netanyahu has legitimized extremist forces such as the Jewish Power Party by bringing them into the government. Moreover, we should understand that these dangerous trends are not unique to Israel. What was going on, what is going on in Israel, in my view, is a political tragedy, but it is part of a trend that is going on around the world, including here in the United States. Oh. We, we are seeing the rise of authoritarian nationalist movements. Wow, he's not holding These back. These movements exploit ethnic and racial hatreds in order to build power for a corrupt few rather than prosperity, justice, and peace for the many. For the last four years, these movements have had a friend in the Trump White House. No. And on January 6th, those forces attacked this very chamber. Madam President, it is no accident that the only European Union country that did not join the nearly unanimous statement yesterday calling for a ceasefire was Hungary. Hungary did not join the rest of the European Union, and Hungary, of course, is led by the ethno-nationalist authoritarian Viktor Orban, a strong ally of both Netanyahu and Donald Trump. Now, some may choose to be on that side, but that is not the side I choose to be on. We must be on the side of those who want to build a society based on real security and political equality based upon the principles of economic justice, racial justice, yeah. political justice, social justice, and environmental justice. 
I believe we must stand in solidarity with those Palestinians and Israelis working to build a future of equality and peaceful coexistence, and not with the intolerant extremists on either side who wish to destroy that future. Wow. In this moment of crisis, the United States should be urging an immediate ceasefire. Should be. What will My they, colleagues, though? I strongly believe that the United States has a major role to play in helping the world build a more peaceful and prosperous future, one in which human rights are upheld and the life of every human being is valued. We should be leading the world in combating the existential threat of climate change. We should be leading the world in making sure that every person on Earth no matter what country he or she lives in, receives a vaccine to protect them from the COVID-19 virus. And yes, we should lead the world in attempting to bring the Israeli people and the Palestinian people together. If the United States is going to be a credible voice on human rights on the global stage, we must recognize that Palestinian rights matter, Palestinian lives matter. Madam President, I object to the Scott Resolution. Bernie Sanders just laid it out right here. And I think he did an amazing job in keeping his argument balanced because he had to speak up and voice the the, the concern for the life of uh, Palestinians that they actually matter. And, you know, he was bringing the facts of what's actually happening. You know, the um, illegal occupation, the blockade, the living conditions there. And it's done by the israelis he's condemning that because a lot of people they miss that they only focus on oh look hamas fired rockets at is israel and oh some israelis died and that's literally it and so he had to condemn both sides he also condemned hamas because hamas uh he labeled it as an extremist terror group and you know, he doesn't want those kind of organizations to be fueled because then they will be seen as the representatives of a particular nation or group of people when he's like, but no, other uh, people have been protesting, you know, other Palestinians and groups have been protesting as well, too. It doesn't necessarily have to be Hamas. That's the voice. You don't have to push that agenda for them. But at the same time, you know, you got to understand that people are going to fight back and whether it is a group like Hamas or whoever is helping them in that fight back they're going to join hands and support you know at the end of the day sometimes you got to put aside differences to fight for the bigger cause but I, I get what he's saying there i didn't necessarily agree with every single thing that he was saying about that particular issue when it comes to uh hamas and this is going to strengthen their image and whatnot i don't think it will but uh i i do appreciate his arguments because he did lay it out uh pretty uh clear and he brought attention to what is happening to the Palestinians that a lot of people are just completely missing. I know he's urging the United States to, you know, really push for a ceasefire and do so much more and be uh, a world leader in uh, human rights and uh, protecting people from diseases and things like that. And, you know, really building the United States' image around the world. Because let's be real, a lot of people when they see the United States, uh, they just want power and they're corrupt, whatever, cor corrupt Western power. And uh, a lot of people, though, also see it as a land of opportunity. So, yes, the United States does amazing and great things. But when it comes to, you know, sending Israel money to build up their military to go and then attack the Palestinians with that you're kind of wondering like hmm you know what's really going on here United States like uh, I thought you were better than that you know so I I, I definitely agree with Bernie Sanders uh, statements for that. I think America does a lot of great things and people look up to United States of America. They always wait, what's America going to do on this issue? What's America doing and why? That image doesn't come overnight. But to maintain that image of a powerful, influential nation that can offer help, 
you know, America's got to do differently on this issue. So 100% agree, Bernie Sanders, and I think he did uh, a great job in presenting this. All right, guys, so that is it for me. I'm going to get out of here. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and don't forget to check out our other related videos. I'll link to them below in the video description section, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.